on the Bobby Bones Show now. Joey Logano. Joey, good to see you, man. Thank you. you, you What's happening? Joey walked in and dropped a helmet off, and he go, He said something huh. snide, then sat down and laughed. <laughs> so you brought this helmet. Uh, you're not an Arkansas Razorback football fan, I assume? I, I mean, I just thought a race car helmet looked better. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It actually looks really cool. I'm going to leave it up here, so I appreciate that. This is my stupid question here. How much does a helmet like that cost? Um, By the time you're all said and done, like the actual race helmets, they're – you know, probably five, six grand by the time you're all said and done with the radios on them. They're, they're all carbon fiber. They're really nice and light. They got all the stuff. It's my head, okay? Mm-hmm. I don't want to cut any corners with my head. I get it. I guess my real question is how much can I pawn that for? Yeah. If I were gonna- well, if I'm being honest, that's a replica, so you probably can get a couple hundred bucks for it. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm super pumped you're here. And so I all. So one, the people who works closest with me, and she's been a part of my show in my life for a long time. Morgan, come over here and have a seat. Morgan is a massive fan of nascar of you and she's gonna make sure that i ask all the good questions that hardcore fans want to know because most of my questions are stupid for example you're really tall how do you fit in a car i i do my car is uh i mean it's made for me right i'm six two um i'm one of the taller guys out there but your seat um you know it's a carbon fiber bucket and then they pour an insert for you so it's it's a foam they build your seat around they build a seat to fit you like perfectly do you and do so that in your real car though can you be like hey. i wish because it is the most comfortable thing in the world you, you would never want to leave your car if you said if you had a seat molded directly to your body the way we do uh you would it's awesome yeah i'd like that garth brooks after this chair this is my, my my work seat that's what you need you need a, a custom molded mm-hmm. chair here no, i for got the one from garth brooks is way better than yours because garth yeah. brooks gave it to me I, well, that's probably right yeah, yeah. that's probably right <laughs> and i'm flexing I can't back compete over with that <laughs> okay morgan that's my stupid question what is a great what's a great joy logano question here that Fans would want to know. Well, this is just a nosy question I have. So you you won the clash, the first race of the season, but you kind of had to decide, am I going to potentially miss the birth of my daughter? Right. How does that conversation go down? I know we saw a little bit of it in the USA show, Race for the Championship, but off camera, like how do you actually decide, decide you may miss the birth of a child? It was, it was hard because, uh, I mean, it's like the worst spot, like, it's good and bad, right? Because like, you're you're about to have you know a great moment with the birth of your of your uh, our third child, our first daughter, and y- we're racing in L.A. We live in North Carolina, so you're all the way across the country. Uh, it's our third kid. Everyone says the third one pops out like a slip and slide. So you're like, all right, this is gonna happen pretty quick, and you don't know if you're gonna get home in time, right? Like, I'm I'm gonna be all the way out on the other side of the country. It's gonna take me at least at least eight hours by the time I get on a plane, fly all the way home, drive to the hospital, I do the whole thing, and I I may miss that. And then I'm going to miss the race too. And so I did what any smart husband would do and said, honey, you tell me what to do. Mm. And so that's what worked out. And she said, you know what? When you leave to go out there, you're there. You're you're full committed. Go racing. And then she goes, I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what okay. about if it had been you the first kid? This, I said, what about if it had been the first kid, Joy? Different situation? Um, gosh, I, I, I don't know. Um, we, we were fortunate enough that he was born in January when we we're not racing, so it was okay. Um, it, I mean, it was a tough decision for sure because it's kind of the the what if something goes wrong, right? Like, what if like you need to be there for for something? And um, thank God everything went smooth and. and the, the way it all worked out was perfectly is, is exactly the way we had it planned up was go out there win the race come home we'll have the baby how long and until you had the baby once you got back home it was two days later did you get on a plane right after the race yep right after just, the race i flew home uh it was the next day we went into the hospital and dang. you and got lucky popped out. i'm telling yeah. you she wouldn't have been so happy if all of a sudden he's on like turn eight <laughs> and all of a sudden or turn and all of a sudden the baby starts coming out that's, that's what are you awesome. gonna do though like it's such a it's a tough spot i mean it's a part of it's the life we live too because you're put in a spot whether are you are you letting your family down, your wife down, uh, by not being there, or you're letting your team down by not being there, right? They they have a lot that's committed to our race team as well, right? There's a lot of bonuses, and their families relying on you as well to to go do your job. So now you're like, you're stuck in the middle, and it's a, I mean, like I said, it's a great spot to be mm-hmm. because you're this is gonna be the birth of your child. It's great, but it's also a tough spot to be. If the baby would have started, let's say she went into labor, would they have told you in your ear during the race? Uh, so my spotter is my best friend. So we, we had a deal. I said, don't, I said, you tell me like right after the race, like if we cross the start finish line, 
if if she's having the baby, I am driving straight out of the racetrack. We're not doing media. I am driving the race car to the airport. <laughs> like, I'm going. Um, so I didn't have to do that, which was good, though. All right, Joey Logano is here. We're talking, first of all, congrats on such a successful season. I mean, you're the, when you were coming in, there's a passion with college football fans and NASCAR fans, and there are a lot of parallels between the two. But I said, Joy Logano's coming in, and some people, you would have thought I just slapped their grandma. <laughs> now, I had not met you. You are extremely warm. You walk in the room. You're smiling. You said hi to everybody. You're a kind guy. But why would people not like you? Why? <laughs> like, what did you do to them, Joey? Um, well, nothing to them particularly, uh, like directly. But I. so here's the thing. I, I think this is, is true in, in probably all sports. And it's really hard for, I think, a lot of people to understand is that when you get in a competitive environment, like driving a race car or playing football or basketball or whatever it may be, you have to flip a switch and become very selfish. like Because you, you have to win. Like It's not about being nice. It's not about doing the right thing. It's about winning the race. Like That's all that matters in those moments. Uh, so you, you become a different person. And I think it's really hard for people to understand how you can do one thing on the racetrack and then get out, take your helmet off and be a normal person, right? And like be actually kind to people, right? But that's what it is though. Like my job is to go out there and win and, and kick everyone's butt. Like that is the job. So I, I I get how that's kind of hard to understand, but I've also like tried to explain that for years that like we're all like that. Um, I may be one of the more aggressive guys on the racetrack, and I think that's where a lot of this all, all comes from is that I, I don't get, I don't like getting pushed around. I always push back every time someone pushes me. So I think that ag aggressive nature is kind of shown a lot on the track. And when you don't get to explain yourself after the race very well, uh, it, it looks like it, people can interpret it however they want, right? And so you kind of, you get kind of both, both sides. Not everybody hates me. Okay, I, I, I agree because no, no, right. there was a lot of love. <laughs> There's some people, love but in people there are passionate with passion. Listen, I would like to take every Alabama football fan and shake them because I'm, you know, I'm market. But in, as individual people, I probably like most every one of them. But the groups, we don't like each other because we almost, it's like a respect of hatred because we love our people and we respect how good they are. We don't want them to beat our people. So all of a sudden, we don't like that fan base. But you know, what's great about it is, is, is passion, right? And that's yep. how build sports is that you're passionate about your team or your driver or whoever that is. Um, and a lot of times when you're very passionate about the person you, or the team you like, you naturally just don't like the others because they're trying to beat that they're person. They're trying to take your team down. Right. Uh, you know, it's funny you say that. When I, So I do this show five days a week. I have a couple TV shows, and I tour doing stand-up. But when I'm not working, I don't, I don't talk. Like, I live my life. Look at me. I'm the center of attention. But then when I'm not... I'm it's I'm a complete introvert. Really? And so when you're saying that, like you're super aggressive when you're driving and you're like the nicest dude when you walk in, there's a switch. I kind of have to flip off. You have to flip right. one on. I got to flip. Yeah. But it's like almost two different people. Do you when you're driving in the are you aggressive when you're driving on, you know, Main Street? <clears throat> uh, no, not not as much. <laughs> Maybe I used to be more than I should be. Kids changed all that for me. OK, <laughs> like you kind of like all of a sudden as a kid in the backseat, you know, got to be a little smarter now. Um, and now when someone goes flying by me down the highway, I'm like, you, you know? <laughs> Do you <laughs> like cars outside of racing? Oh, absolutely. I am a huge car guy. Uh, antique cars, old cars. That's that's my my thing more than anything. Um, but You have a garage with cars. Them? Yeah, it's probably too much. I have a car problem. I oh, do. how I many? I, I like shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he likes cars. This, that's his shoes. <laughs> Morgan, what is your uh, next educated question for Joy Logano? I want to go back to like the drama of it all because that's one of my favorite parts. Um, so obviously you're going to get into altercations with other drivers. It's happened. Sometimes you get into physical fights with other drivers, but then you have to race alongside them for sometimes like years and years to come. So what's the process of making amends? Because NASCAR fans never forget. <laughs> and they never forget. Neither the drivers. Uh, they, they remember everything too. And it it's going to happen, right? Because we compete against, it's the same drivers every week, right? We, it's it's a, tra a traveling circus, as I call it, is that you're going from racetrack to racetrack, racing the same cars, same drivers, same teams. Uh, and, and you think about other sports, football, if we, we keep making references to football, so we'll do that. You compete against a team, and then you may not compete against them again all year, or maybe it's three or four months before you see them again. There's time to like kind of let it settle. But when like something happens one week, and then next week, there he is again, right in front of you, you know, like, 
who, what am I going to do? Right. Like you, you all, it's, it hasn't died off yet. Like it's still that feeling, the anger, it's all still there. Um, so you react in different ways. And I, I did a lot of it the wrong way earlier in my career. And, and a part of that is just coming in the sport so young. I've been doing this for 15 years now and I started when I was 18. And so I just like, probably everyone in this room, you did some stupid things when you're 18. Yeah, I do them now. I did it in front of everyone on TV. And so they remember that. And that's part of the reason why they don't like me now is another, no, another I, piece of there's that. There's only <laughs> a small group, but there's a very passionate group. Going. That's yes, right. Yes. That's right. Um, but but it, it's kind of how, how you do it, right? And you have to earn respect out there. And a lot of times the best way to earn respect is by giving respect. But you also have to stay in your ground, right? You, you can't get pushed around either. So there's just a balance between all that. So when I'm driving sometimes, I'll get in the car and I'll drive somewhere and I'll be like, dang, I'm already here. I guess I zoned out. You ever like daydream and zone out while you're driving? <laughs> no, no, it was different. Like, I mean, yes, when I'm driving down the road, yes. I'm <laughs> you, like, how did I get here? <laughs> exactly. I'm already at the mall. <laughs> or you take a wrong turn, and you're like, oh, or all of a sudden you wake up, and you're like, why am I pouring milk on my head? <laughs> <laughs> right. In the race car, I mean, it's it's very intense, right? Because you're pushing uh, your yourself, your vehicle at the absolute limit, and if you lose focus for a second, you hit the wall, right? And then your race is over, right? And so you, your your heart rate is high. You're in, it's very intense. You're focused in like this ultra focus, and so it it can't really you can't really compare it very well to driving a car. Okay, let me make this comparison because you do race a lot. Um, so I hosted American Idol uh, once when Seacrest was out, and I was I was on the show anyway. And they say, hey, we need you to host because Ryan's sick. So I go up, and I didn't feel like the moment was too big for me, and I'd done a lot of hosting things. And as, as I'm doing it, we're on camera, we're whatever. I, I find myself wondering what the score of the football game is that I'm missing because of this. Because I'm, I'm, co I'm comfortable. I'm still doing an A-plus job, but I find myself – Do you ever are you ever driving in your race and you're like, man, I wonder what's – what we're cooking for dinner tonight. No. Dang. Right. No. I mean, I, I, I don't know if every driver will answer that the same as I do, but I, I don't. Like I literally zone into something where it takes all my focus where I can't – I can't. Maybe, maybe you're smarter than me to where you can handle more than one no, thing but at once. I, I than literally me. That's what it is. <laughs> you're a champion. I can't do it. <laughs> Morgan, next question. Okay. So rookies, they have to have like stripes on their car, right? Right. Yeah. Is there any spoken or unspoken like initiation process as a rookie? And I know you're no longer one, obviously, but when you were a rookie, did you ever have any moments with veteran drivers where you're like, wow, they're ruthless? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, so when you're a rookie in the in the in the Cup Series, uh, they put a stripe on the back bumper. It's called a rookie stripe, so everybody knows this is the new guy, right? Like, <laughs> you don't this guy may not know. It's like what driver's he's doing. ed, the magnet on the car. Yeah. That's yeah. what it like, is. Yeah, yeah. New driver. Yeah, be yeah. patient with me, please. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> it's like one of those things. And um, I mean, it, it definitely is like a a lot of the the drivers that have been around for a while. It's almost like they set the tone, pretty pretty aggressively with that driver, right? They try to take control of like, hey, welcome to the big league moments, right? Like, here we are, you know, this is how we race. We're not standing up for this or, or whatever it may be. And I went through this like a lot. And and it's funny. So I went through this a lot with, with Kevin Harvick uh, early in my career. And we had a, a couple push and shove and matches and back and forth on the racetrack. And it's just like a, it's really hard to deal with. Um, and it's funny because now looking back at it, and I was talking to him last night, we were, we were eating dinner together, um, and, and we were talking about some of the stuff, and I get it now. Like, now that I've been around for a long time, I realize where I was screwing up and what I was doing wrong and how I came into the sport the wrong way, uh, and I understand why he did what he did. But I didn't when I was 18 years old. <laughs> so it's funny that, like, you can go through all that, and then you can have a friendship kind of away from the racetrack and, and talking about it, you know, here we are. 10, 12 years later after that, but uh, kind of funny how that all works out. Are you familiar with the band ACDC? I am. Okay. A little, they're still here, a little before my time, a little before yours, obviously. <laughs> so they have a lead guitarist named Angus Young, and he goes out and he says every night he loses like five to six pounds because he goes so hard. Now there's a lot of intensity in what you do for hours at a time in a full body suit. Do you lose weight from the time you get in the car to the time you get out? And does that, does it affect what you eat? that day or how much you drink that day yes yes um so our race car is like we don't have air conditioning we don't have like a lot of the creature comforts that you guys have in your car while you're driving down the road because it weighs a lot it robs horsepower from the car um so it, it gets really hot right so now our engines are running at you know 8700 rpm uh and we don't have air conditioning so it's a quite the water heater in front of us uh and you can imagine that the water temps are you know 
250, 260 degrees, like it's it's hot. Well, all that 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 temperature from the headers, the engine, all that stuff gets just put throughout the whole car. So a good rule of thumb, it's 40 degrees warmer inside the car than the outside air temp. So if it's a 90 degree day, it's 130 degrees Jeez. inside the car. You're in there for three, three and a half hours throughout a 500 mile race. Uh, so you, yeah, you're going to sweat a lot um, and you're working the whole time, right? You have to stay focused. You have to do all this, uh, but we train for it, right? It's not like it's, it sounds like you guys are all looking at me like, oh my God, that sounds miserable. And, and, and sometimes it is, but you train for it. You do it every week. You hydrate, you eat correctly, you do all the things, just like any other athlete before they prepare for a game. It's the same for us before, as we prepare for a race. Dang, that's, a, that's hot. But do you mm-hmm. have like a little fan? Or something? I mean, I have got a, one of those little <laughs> yeah. I'm like, they make them on Amazon, you put them around your neck. And, and it's a great idea. <laughs> I do have a, 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 so on top of the helmet, you see there's a little air duct on the top. We can and plug mine in. or the real one? Well, and, and both, <laughs> but um, and on the top and the back. Uh, they plug in, and that's where uh, you get, like, outside air blown into your helmet so you can breathe, breathe fresh air. So you don't, like – and it goes through, like, a CO filter so where you don't get sick and all that from the fumes. Okay. So that's uh, that's pretty much all you got. Dang, okay. that's, that's hardcore. Morgan, next question. Okay. So you mentioned race preparation. A lot goes into it before you actually make it to the track. I want to know what area you think most drivers, like, they slack the most in, if it's the sim or what part they look forward to the least. Um, I think probably every driver finds their own way to prepare, right? Like everybody finds their own way and what works for them. And, and you have to realize what your weaknesses are and what your strengths are and try to play to those. And, um, and, and you know, for, for me, um, the only way I'm going to feel confident is if I do all the prep work. Um, <clears throat> so it's really like a lot of film review for me, a lot of meetings with the engineers and going through a lot of the setup stuff. Like that's where I really feel like I can impact the team the most and where I can help myself be prepared the most. Uh, when it gets to race time, but like others go to the simulator a lot. I don't believe in the sim. I don't. I don't. I, you don't I, believe in the sim. I don't. I don't go there. Uh, there's like a this racing like simulator you get in, and it's like a like the coolest video game of all time. Um, but it, it's pretty realistic, but not all the way realistic. And so you can like to me, I think I can form a lot of bad habits and steer the team down the wrong direction. And so I don't believe in it 100. percent So I. I don't it go It worked there a lot. for Ross Chastain this season. He did a video game move, yes. <laughs> Which I don't know if that's correct or not, but, but he did it. And it classic worked. Ross, so it was, right, everybody? Yeah, 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 classic, yeah, classic Ross. Ross yeah. Yeah. He's like, who's Ross? Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> classic Ross, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just, um, everyone finds their way. Like, you guys prepare for the show in different ways. I'm sure everybody has a different role in different jobs and, and do it differently. Um, it's the same for us. All right, we have two questions each. So some of my athlete friends and some that I just know of in their contracts say you, they can't ski or they can't bungee jump because they have obligations to um, their, their sponsor or their team. Are those in your deals with them too? Because you are an athlete for sure and you don't want to hurt yourself so you can't drive. Can you yeah. snow ski? Um, it says in there just don't be an idiot basically. <laughs> it's very, like, don't, don't go – do something and get yourself hurt. If you do, you're out. Do you right? make That's basically decisions what it comes based down to. on that, though? Like if your family yeah, went to Colorado, you'd be like, I'm not going to ski. I'm probably not going to do that. Right? I mean, I went skiing with my son actually this week, but he's four and we stayed on the bunny hill and I was teaching him how to ski and we were kind of going on the But no, I did not go to the top and try to go down because I just know – I don't want to take that risk. Motorcycles? Would you ride a motorcycle? I don't, I don't do motor- – I, I mean, I ride a quad a lot. Like I, I ride a lot of stuff off-road because that's – to me, that's like it's how I grew up, and in a way, it kind of keeps me sharp when we're not in the race car. Like this, just think about it. It's not easy to just go practice. Like I can't pick up a ball and go shoot hoops, mm-hmm. right? I can't just go get in a race car and drive it in my front yard and right think that that I'm getting somewhere with it. Like it's not that simple or easy for us. So video game. There's Same. there's that. There, there's also to me, it's just driving something at its edge, whatever it is. Whether it's a, oh, a go kart or a, 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 oh, I love this stuff. I love driving just, cars. Just this is it. No, I would never do that. Never ever. Do that. I don't like heights. <laughs> no, I'll stay on the ground. Um, but I do think anytime you can push yourself uh, to the limit um, inside a vehicle, I think helps you on race day. Morgan. Okay, I'm curious about the Nashville Fairgrounds because there's going to be a vote early next year that's basically going to help determine if NASCAR is going to race there again. And y'all have not raced there since the 80s. Why is this a track like Dale Jr. and other current drivers are so vocal about wanting to get back on the series? I think, you know, it's a great question. That's how you know she's into this. She knows about the fairgrounds up right here. Huh? And, and Ross. Ross. She, she knows, knows Ross that too. too. Yeah, yeah. Yes, very educated. 
Um, I would say the, the the main reason for the fairground, I think, is it, it's a very historic facility. It's not far from downtown, um, which is really good. I think we learned that a lot this year is if we bring the races to the people, <clears throat> it is a whole different experience. Right When we raced at the L.A. Coliseum, right, we we're racing downtown. The place was packed, and I think it was it was close to 70 percent of the people there were first time racers, race fans, like never been to the racetrack before. Seventy percent of the people there have never been to one before. Um, right? So you think about the people that, that we haven't really reached out to yet. So I think a lot of times bringing the racetrack to the people, uh, the fairgrounds kind of accomplishes that. It's an old f- uh, facility um, that has a historic vibe, right? That throwback vibe. It's kind of cool. Um, so I, I look forward to it. Uh, hopefully we can all make it work, right? We're doing that at North Wilkesboro uh, this year at the All-Star Race. It's another racetrack that's been shut down for years. It's been shut down for, shoot, I don't know how long. 30 years? Yeah, a long time. Long and time. Del Jr. has also been really big on that. About that one. Well, he's a big throwback guy, yeah. so it makes sense. But it's cool that, like, you know, Dale Jr. was our most popular driver for years. And, you know, now that he's retired and he's doing TV stuff, but he still cares so much about the sport that he's always looking for ways to, to you know, keep things going along and doing different things. And he has that throwback, uh, you know, passion that he's always pushing, which is great. Joey Logano is here and not talking about anyone specifically or even yourself at all, but sometimes when guys will hop out of the car and they'll start swinging at each other. Why would you take your helmet off when you, not you, but I, 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 like if you're going to fight, I, why take off protection in any world? I see them take their helmet off and then go to town. <laughs> Football players do it too. Like, why would you take your helmet off? Well, I mean, you kind of, <laughs> well, you have to, like, I, I don't know. I feel like you have to. Like that's, like that's the code say, of ethics. Like, yeah. I think like, yeah, the, yeah you got to take it off. Like the Roman it's warriors didn't go, okay, time to battle. Pull your helmets off, guys. <laughs> Listen, no, you leave it on in case. It's not about being smart in that moment, okay? Like mm-hmm. you're already doing something stupid. You're fighting. It's already dumb in the first place. <laughs> so you might as well go all out and take your helmet off while you're doing it. Okay. Be extra dumb. Do you feel it if you get hit? Or are you adrenaline? Just- I, what? If you get punched? Do it, like at a race. At a race. Oh, like like in the car? No, let's say uh, you, you and me were running beside each other, and I'm like, pull over. Is that what you do? Point at the side. That's yeah, it. Pull I over. I put my blinker on <laughs> yeah, after pull that. Yeah. Like, get and so you get. Let's say you get in a fight. Wherever you wherever you guys fight, like on the side after the race. Do you, are you your adrenaline up so much that you don't really feel it then? It's really not that many fights. Yeah. Like it doesn't happen that often. It's not a hockey game. Um, and, and and honestly, I haven't been involved in one in, in quite some time now, um, because mainly, um, my son. Can watch YouTube now. That's good. Your dad. And your it dad lives. Now. It lives forever. And so That's why I don't like, fight. Oh. Uh, right. Like, um, there's better ways to handle it. <laughs> like I said, I made a lot of dumb mistakes when well, I was a kid. Leave your helmet so on. So there it is. If it happens um, anytime soon. Yeah, or just handle it differently. I, I uh, think that's something too. Yeah, leave your helmet on. Yeah. I want to see you rocking in a helmet and be like, I told him. I told him. All right, Morgan. Last question. Okay. Last question. I try and convert all my friends into NASCAR fans because yeah. I just feel like it's so slept on. Morgan over there knows. Oh, I, I, she's all die hard. Um. What's your best elevator pitch for the people listening that have never watched a race or given NASCAR a chance? I think you got to go to one to really get the full experience, right? Like, just like most sports, like on TV is great, right, to watch and and it has all that. But when you go to a race in person and you feel all the cars come by the first time, right? You have 40 cars going, you know, 150 to 200 miles an hour by you. Uh, That feeling you can't replicate it anywhere. Like there's, there's no, like think about like if you've ever been sitting on the side of the road when you had a flat tire or something like that while you're waiting for AAA and, and you see all the, the cars going by you at 70 miles an hour and they look like they're hauling the mail, right? Like they look like they're going fast at 70. Well, like triple that, you know what I mean? Like or, or more than double at least how much faster we're going and they're loud and they're bumping and banging and, and doing it. It's awesome. Like I, I fell in love with this when I was a kid when I was six or seven years old and, and I haven't changed a bit since then. Like I'm always going to be a race fan first. Um, but like the feeling of the adrenaline, all that stuff going is cool. And then as you start to learn to detail the technical side of the sport, the strategy side of the sport, uh, it just keeps getting deeper, just like every other sport, right? Like it, there's the casual way of watching it. And then you can just fully immerse yourself into all the details. What are you involved in joy that like brings purpose to why you race cars? Meaning, you get to do this, you get a platform. So with that platform, you like to do blank. Yeah, that's a great question. And that's what I say, what, what's the why, right? Like, why, why do you do this? And, and, you know, my wife said it best to me one time. Um, once we, we were, she got married a few years ago. She has been, oh, that's almost eight, eight or nine Don't say it ago. wrong. It's been a long yeah, time Yeah, just now. go, but we'll oh, edit it. Oh, well, yeah. one time, this isn't live right now. But, uh, um, and she said to me, she goes, when, when you're on your deathbed, do you want people or trophies? 
And that was kind of like the eye-opening experience for me. And I, I said I want both. And, and, I, and I think I could do that because I think you could take a trophy and do something with it, right? Like, no one's going to remember we won the championship this year 15 years from now. No one's going to care. No one's going to know. It's, it's just going to be a stat in a history book that someone's going to look at and it's going to move on. But if you take the platform that God's given me here to do something uh, that impacts people for a long period of time, uh, that's, that's a, something that lasts for generations. Um, and that's why we started Joey Logano Foundation. We give second chances to children and young adults in times of crisis. A lot of foster foster kids, foster families, um, kids that just haven't been dealt maybe the, the best of hands. Uh, and, and they need they just need some loving, right? They just need somebody to support them, help them, uh, you know, become a contributing member of society. Uh, and we work with a lot of organizations that do that. And, and basically, uh, we, we use our, our race fans, our platform and all that to pour a little bit of fuel on, on the sparks that these other organizations are doing, right? That's or try to bring some some light to what they're doing. And that's that's the why, right? That's that's the whole reason why we really do what we do. Because if not, these trophies, are they're empty cups. Like, it doesn't it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. So that's that's the main reason here. What, uh, my last, not even a real question, but you have a ring on that is a monster. What is that? That's the championship ring from from this year. So they, they gave this that to me. Is, uh, is that the real Phoenix. one? Dang. That's the one right there. Wow. It's, a, it's a little big and gaudy. It's a, a little flashier than I typically am. This is a pretty flashy thing to do. But what is it? I felt like it's, yeah, we're here for the banquet. It's probably like the only time that I can wear it without like feeling like I'm a it's a bell buckle, little, you know. Yeah, Huge. it's a yeah. bell buckle. It's a bell buckle. Huge. Like we, Eddie, Eddie, we were get we headlined the uh, the in Wyoming. Yeah, the, it's uh, Freedom, fr- Freedom uh, Frontier Day. Frontier it's a big days. deal. So Eddie, we, we headlined that show, and they gave us these big belt buckles. And it uh, is not as big as ring. It's, that, <laughs> it's not as big as that ring. I, it's 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 heavy. Mm-hmm. It's a little much. But uh, hey, you know what? If we won the whole thing, I might as well I wear agree. it for at least I a agree. weekend, right? <laughs> well, I'm gonna say this: you are my favorite. Driver. Am I the only one you ever met, though? No. No? All right. No, not at all. Who's I, the one? We've met a few. Tony Stewart Tony liked Stewart. her feet. It was weird. It, do you like know him? Feet. Do you know Tony Stewart? I know Tony, Stewart? yeah. Is, have you, did you know he's maybe maybe has a foot fetish? I did not know this. Okay. Yeah, he was talking to her about he, her feet. Yeah, he kept staring like at her. Like on him. the air or like afterwards? No, no, we were at like a, a creepy conversation we about your feet? <laughs> race and maybe interviewing him for something, and he kept looking at them, and then, I don't know, what he, like he walked away. Well, wait, like, so we don't have to spend a lot of time on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I feel like I got to know more about okay, it, though. Okay, okay. <laughs> he just said, I, he said, I, I, you have nice feet, and nice he feet. walked Favorite away. That's Morgan, it. who did I just the guy. Who did I just do the, the TV show with? Hal Bush. Oh. Uh, you know what, that guy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's the thing, I'll be honest with you, Joey, I get on this, and I'm not supposed to say what show it was yet, but we did a show together, and I didn't know, I didn't know who he was, uh-huh. and I thought they brought on, like, a fan to, like, be a part, <laughs> that went over well, <laughs> and I was just confused, and I said, because th- his house was in the background, and I said, dang, whatever you do must pay well, I didn't know who it was. And I think he thought I was kidding, but I wasn't because I didn't know who he was. And then later I realized he was a driver. Uh-huh. And I said, oh, this is Kyle Bush. And I remember somebody was like, oh, yeah, that's Kyle Bush. And I, what's he known for? Because um, the reaction wasn't positive when I said that to who I was with. They were like, oh, yeah, that's Kyle Bush. Uh, he's he's a, a love him or hate him type of okay. Of, of Just person, a big personality. Right? Like, he's a big personality. He's very uh, emotional and, and, and really speaks his mind a lot. Um, and uh, he's a character. Right, he, I mean, he's, a, he's a character in our sport for sure. Uh, he's a very talented race car driver. Uh, you know, he's one, one of the best on the racetrack. Um, I ended up liking him yeah. just fine. Yeah. I just didn't know who he was at first, and I thought he thought I was joking, but I wasn't. I don't know. I just thought it was a dude who I was teamed up. I didn't. It was a whole thing. But in the end, <laughs> look at us. He's my favorite. I met him. I met Bush. I met Denny Hamlin. You met him. Met Hamlin. And you know this guy Ross now. Ross Chastain. <laughs> Bro. Watermelon man. What? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Joey, you're awesome, man. You can't, you know. Sometimes I'm a, a little hesitant or a little apprehensive, but yeah, you're the guy. You're my guy. All right, well, like thank the you. nicest guy. I want to give you a helmet. I kind of bought your love, but no, that's okay. You know, it actually put you a quarter step back because I was like, you're trying to buy my love. Oh, but then now I should have gave it to you afterwards. No, no, it's still good. I like it. It's still good. Yeah, okay. I like it. All right, all right. Uh, okay, listen, you guys follow Joey at Joey Logano. That's my new favorite driver. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be watching. Thank you. You get on the track, do you shift your gears, win some stuff. And that's what we do. That's it, Same. right? So what do we look for to make sure it's your car? Number 22. 22. That's okay. it. Is bright. it always? It's yellow. bright. Pins Shell, Ford Pennzoil, Mustang. Bright 
yellow and red car. Okay. You, you can't miss it. It's he's the always one that stands up in the front. The most. Yeah, he's the guy. Yeah, I like that. He's yeah, got yeah, winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's but yeah, there. but once they start going in circles, you can't tell. Well, they don't who's... show the people in the back. When I mean, okay. you'll see. It's the yellow one. It stands you. out. It's one yellow. of the only yellow cars That's out there. Easy. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Big yeah. fan here. Yeah. Thank you. Here yeah. he is, our friend Joey Logano. All right, guys. Thank you.